All right, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a PHP script that I made real quick. Basically, what it's going to do is we'll have our web page, and um, you can post data to that page using uh, jQuery, and it just automatically submits the post to a post PHP script that's going to save. You don't have to have the page refresh, which is a huge thing sometimes. Uh, if you don't want the page to refresh because it's just a better interaction with the user or whatever the case might be, um, sometimes it's just nice having um, a page not refresh when you're just making like a simple change and then you have to wait for the page to completely refresh. This gives you the ability to just uh, save the data automatically to a uh, SQL database in the back end. Now, um, I'm definitely not the best security person when it comes to code, so I tried my best, so correct me if you see anything that I'm doing wrong, um, but I'm giving my best effort at this, so let's uh, dive right into it. So once you unzip the files, you're going to have a couple scripts that I already have open up here. Um, you can see that I'm in this directory that I created on my web server called no refresh underscore using jQuery. And then I put that in my browser. This is the IP address to my uh, local host, but I just put the IP address to the server. So if I hit enter, I put a little error message on here that's going to make you um, create a database and a uh, table and then upload the SQL file that I have here that's got the database details of all the fields you need into that database. So it's first thing. Let's go to our db.php file and edit it. So you can see we have our database details here we need to change. So go to your PHP my admin. We're gonna create a new um, user and database. I like creating, um, I think for best security practices, um, you need to, so like I said, for best security practices, I like to um, create a username and database for that particular program. So let's say an attacker gets the database details. You don't want to have the root uh, username and password because then they can get access to all the database. Now chances are if he gets that database details, he can pretty much get anything he wants because he probably has shell access. Um, but to me, I just like doing separate database, separate username for that database and not give permissions to any other database within that um, SQL um, database. So, so you do local and we'll just do uh, demo post and then uh, just do generate password. So go here. So the username will be demo post. Database will be demo post because we're going to hit this checkbox here that says create database with same name and grant all privileges. We got our generated password. Put our generated password in there. Hit save, come back to here, uh, make sure that all looks good, scroll down to hit go. It's going to create that database. No, we're not going to save that. And if we go back to here and refresh, it's going to make it seem like it's working, but we still have one more step. Uh, we need to go back here and click on our database that we just created and go to, we can either do import or uh, SQL. If you do import, just browse and select that file. Um, but SQL, you can do it too. So right click on the SQL file, hit edit, copy the code. And this is gonna create the database for us. Paste it in there and hit go. Once that is done, we can go back here and you can see that it created one table. Hit browse, there should be no data in there. Go back to this tab. All right, so let's uh, just refresh the page. Type in uh, you know, demo test, one, two, three, four, hit post data. Now, if nothing happens there, uh, let's see if we just do test, it should load that. Yep, go back to here, go to structure, and see this message is only 11. Let's change that to 200. So basically what we're changing is the length of values that can be stored in that uh, field. So now we just change it to 200. So if we go back here and do that uh, demo test one, two, three, four, post data, it should load, yep, there you go. It should load everything in there now. So if we go back here, hit browse, there you go. So there's our two 
things. And if we click this, it's just going to clear everything out. But we still have it saved in the database. Now, let's say you want to keep that data there. Uh, I already wrote a little script that I'll leave in there. And we'll add it right below this area. So we do need to add in the row details with things just message. And then date added. Save. Come back to here. Let's go ahead and clear these fields out of there. Come back to here. Let's just refresh one more time and make sure we don't get any errors. We don't. So let's do demo test five, six, seven, eight. And then demo test one, two, three, four. And then if we refresh the page, you can see the data stays because we are calling that data back in this code right here. So that's why that's staying. And I'll leave that code in there so you guys can have that. Um, and we, you can also see we have sanitize, a sanitize file here. So this is going to be sanitizing the input data into the database because we want to make sure we protect ourselves from SQL injection. Uh, I, there's a lot of scripts out there that don't do that. Um, so you can see we're posting our data. We're doing the SQL sanitization here. And then we're going to do insert into the database. And then you can see that we're grabbing the data to display it back using jQuery to display it right away on this page. Um, which is where this is coming in right here and our CSS and then we also do sanitization on that page so we're going to close out of that so yeah now you have a script that you can post data right to the page and you don't even have to refresh the page so we can do you know as much as you want here and then even if I do refresh the page, the data will come back. And then if we go in here, you can see that it's capturing the ID so that each comment has a unique ID, the message, of course, the date, and then IP address of whoever added it. So if I you know, connect to it from a different IP or a different computer, you'll see that IP address there. Um, and keep in mind the message column is set to 200 characters. So if you need more or less, you adjust that accordingly. Um, of course, it's probably best practices to limit the field um, then to do that. We actually to do both. So it is just max length. Uh, let's just set it for um, 10. Let's see what happens. Now, of course, there's a lot of things to get around that. Um, so you can see I can't type any more text. So then you can set this to 200. So people can't do more than 200. But people can simply right click, inspect. And um, that's why you want to have it in the database correctly as well. Because they could just edit this attribute and put in 200 there. And then now they can type more. So there are ways around it. That's why a lot of people use that plus JavaScript to check. And then they do the database column check. I mean, they do a lot of other checks. So um, I won't go. I can, I can talk all day long about programming. So this is it, you guys. Uh, no refresh using PHP, jQuery, and a MySQL backend. Um, please leave a comment for anything else. Thanks, guys.